Yo, yo. Let a few people jump on. Jared, what's up? When you come on, tell me where you're from. Dave, what's happening? Tell me where you're from when you jump on. Martin Stevens, what's going on, man? Andre, Indri, I, I think I'm always, how you, is it in? I think it's Indri. Mueller, what's up, man? Michael, what's happening? We got Marilyn in the house. Tell me where you're from. Sharon invite. Tell me where you're from. Post where you're from. And we're going to let a few people hop on. We're going to talk about where I made some mistakes when I first started getting into investing, right? And uh, I can help you avoid some of those mistakes. And if you're going to start buying real estate, there's a certain particular real estate you should start with. I don't think you should start with multifamily and buy a bunch of, you know, 12 plex and all. You need to start with a particular, you know, specific niche. Brian, what's up? PA in the house. Charlotte, what's going on? Charlotte, Charlotte's in my program. Jesse, what's going on? Hey, buddy, they call me and Andre here in the U.S. Okay, cool, brother. <laughs> Never heard that name. Steven, what's up? Steven the Killer Miller from Ohio. So we're getting a few people on. Let's go up to the balcony. I don't want to like sitting up here. Let me walk upstairs real quick and go upstairs. Denver. Ruben, what's up? Ruben's in in my program. Alex, Alex is in the program. Kenneth, what's up? Give me a few minutes. Let me, uh, Charlotte, close second deal last week. Awesome. Make sure you post your checks in the group. Charlotte, don't, um, don't be shy. Post that stuff. I ain't bragging. It's just, it's just a matter of giving uh, other people confidence in the fact that this is doable and you can definitely do it, right? All right, give me one second. I'm almost there. Check out this view, guys. Check out this view before I get started. It's looking beautiful. Look at that. Destin, Florida. Brian said you should call these lives so rude. Look at that water in Destin, man. It is gorgeous right here. Anyway, guys, let's uh, let's get started. So. When I first got started, right, let me plug this in. Uh, give me one second. Guys, when I got first when I first got started, what's up Josh? What's up, Lance? You know, you hear a lot of the gurus say, man, you gotta start with multifamily, you gotta start with this and that. You shouldn't start with multifamily, you shouldn't start with high-end rentals. You need to start with what, what I call the sweet spot, right? That sweet spot. What's up, Tim? That sweet spot is not the hood. It's not the middle class. It's not even the you know upper end. It's right above the hood. It's that, and every market's gonna be different, right? In my market, it's that fifty or sixty thousand dollar property that you can get for like thirty, thirty, forty thousand if you have a wholesaling business, right? <laughs> yeah, Tim. I'm on the beach, man. I'm rocking no shirt today. So. When, you, when you're buying these deals, right? When you're buying these deals, make sure that you don't, you don't like for instance, for me, right? I jumped into the high end game. I went and I bought like, bought like three million bucks. What's up, Jess? I bought like $3 million worth of high end rentals because the, the economy was booming, right? Here in Lafayette, Louisiana in 2012, oil was like $100 a barrel, $95 a barrel. We, we were killing it. Everybody had jobs. I could buy a, a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house that was worth 225 and I can get it rented within three days for like 1850 right well I got kicked what's up uh, Darren what's up Ben shout out where you from when you come on well I got kicked in the nuts in 2014 when the economy crashed Norman what's going on the economy crashed right oil went from hundred and ten dollars a barrel to like twenty eight dollars a barrel right and what happened was I lost freaking Dude, I lost like my ass. What's up, Dan? All the rentals that I had that, that I bought with that were high end. They, they, you know, nobody could afford it anymore. 
nobody could afford the high-end rentals. So, but what I noticed was, so I got kicked in the nuts, right? I, I was losing like four or five grand a month in rentals. And I noticed that lower-end rentals, what's up, Jerry? What's up, Tyler? I noticed the lower-end rentals, they, they didn't lose, you know, no, all my buddies that had lower-end rentals that have been in the game for say 10, 15, 20 years, they never missed a beat. Even when the economy crashed, those those lower end rentals, meaning that sweet spot, that that 600 to 1,000 mark, it never goes away, guys. So if you're just getting into real estate, do not go and buy freaking high end rentals, uh, even you know vacation rentals or you know you know high end single family homes. Buy lower end. I know some of you guys. Oh, I want to buy a nice house. I'm an investor. I, I, I would never live in something like that. So I got to buy something that's really uh, something I would want to live in. Do not buy what you would live in. You want to buy what the majority of the renters across the United States would be in, and that's most of them are, are going to be lower end rental, uh, low end rentals, right? You need to make sure you buy lower end rentals when you first get started. It's a hedge. It'll protect you if we have a huge correction in the economy. Do not go and buy high end rentals. So whatever your sweet spot, like for instance, you know. The average house in Lafayette is probably 175,000, uh, 175,000 and above, right? So I'm buying houses right now that are, I'm literally buying houses for 22,000 that appraise for 60, and I'm getting 750 to 850 a month in rent. Ecom says 900 and under, sweet spot in Milwaukee. Exactly, e Ecom. Exactly. Or is it Alex? You want to stay in that sweet spot, no matter what the economy does. You can't go wrong if you're in that sweet spot. So you have to figure out what your sweet spot is in your in your area. I, I can't tell you. You know, if you're in a high-end market, say like Las Vegas, Miami, the sweet spot's probably gonna be about 1,500 to 2,000, right? Versus a little town like Lafayette, Louisiana, where the sweet spot's 850, 750. So you, it's not for me to tell you. You gotta figure out what your sweet spot is. So, you know, I wanted to do this live because I got my I got kicked in the nuts, guys, and I really fucked up when I first got in and started buying up all these single family homes that were cuz they were nice. They were nicer single family homes. They were, you know, you know, 100 and I was paying 125, 115, 135 and they were worth 1 195, 200. And I thought it was cool. Everybody could, you know, rent that out for 1500 or above until the economy crashed, right? So Tim says, even Frank McKinney started his career flipping 50K crack homes before going into $50 million. Exactly, Tim. You, you got to start off. You do not want to start off with the high-end stuff. Hein, what's up? Rent price is going up and up here. Yeah, exactly. Look, the U.S. is turning into a renter's nation. Like, it's getting harder and harder to get a loan. If you can buy up all these lower-end properties, look, they're not making these lower-end properties no more, meaning... I can buy a twenty, thirty thousand dollar house that's worth fifty or sixty. You can't build a house like that ever again. There's no way to build another house like that ever again. So you're locked in with all this this equity to build to build even to build a lower end house in a lower end neighborhood, brand new construction it costs hundred grand. So if you can buy a property for thirty grand, like you're golden. You can always always get seven fifty to nine hundred bucks forever. Joshua, what's up, Jason? What percentage of the average cost of a home typically represents the sweet spot? I know it varies some. So Jason, we just talked about that. So basically, you know, my sweet spot in my town is gonna be about 750 to 950 or 1,000. That, that's, or even, six, I'd say 600 to 1,000 is my sweet spot. Anything above, well, and even 1250, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't wanna, right now where we're living, I don't wanna buy anything above 1250 a month and that, that rents for 1250, because after you get 1250 and above, it's just tough to stay rented. You know, because all those people, like when the economy is good, everybody's got jobs, everybody can pay rent. They can pay fifteen hundred, two thousand. dollars 2000 As soon as the economy dips, everybody still needs a place to live. They're just going to drop down into the what? The sweet spot. They're going to get a, a, a job where they're making less money, but they're going to get a, a rental at, at 800 bucks instead of 1500 So you, you can't go wrong, right? Let's see. Eric, what's up? Tim, too many people watch flip or flop on AGTV and want to go flip luxury properties. It's not the way to go. Absolutely, Tim, that's 100% truth. Look, you know, it, it's it's so true. You watch and don't watch TV. Don't watch the HGTVs because it's not the actuality of where you should be. The $22,000 house you buy, is that in the hood? Not, well, here's the thing, Alex. It's it's kind of a, it's it's the hood, but it's not, it's not, it's one step above the hood, right? It's It's working class people. They have jobs. They're not, you know, they want to take care of their family. They're working class, 
but they, they have a job, say, you know, both the, the, the mother and father work, one works maybe making $12 an hour, an hour, and the dad works, you know, as a machinist somewhere making $15 an hour. It's not like the hood where, you know, you have a, a gun fight every other night. It's not like that. I, I stay away from the war zones. Do not, I repeat, do not buy in the bottom of the barrel. You want to take a step above that. You don't want to have to be in the middle class. You don't want to be in the war zone. You want to be in between that, right? That's the safe zone. Like that, no matter what the economy does, they're always going to rent in that. Let's see. Omar, what's going on? Eric, what's up? Anita, my mama. Veronica, hello, Chris, and everyone. Thanks for saying that, Chris, Charlotte. Yep, it's, it's so true. So the sweet spot is normally 20% 20, 20 minus medium price range. That, that's good right there. You know, it, it's you just got to be careful, guys. It, it, if you get into rentals, everybody thinks it's fun being a landlord. If you don't buy right, like you could literally kick yourself in the nuts big time. Make sure you buy right. Omar, what's up? Brad Hare, what's up? Brad's in my coaching program. He, he kills it. And look, the best way to start off with if you're going to get into rental properties, even if you don't want to wholesale, start a wholesaling business just to buy your, your rental properties right. Right? Start, get a wholesaling pipeline and, and cherry pick your deals and, and buy the best ones. Right? Tim, buy me South Florida, the middle class neighborhood or where mailmen, tow truck drivers and teachers live with the occasional unlicensed pharmacist drug dealer working in the corner. Yep. Derek, what should I buy for the FHA multi that I've been living in? What should I buy for an FHA multi that, I, that I'll be living in? I know you're talking about an FHA loan. What should I buy? I mean, look, I'm not saying don't buy a multi. If you can buy a, a multi unit that's, that's in the sweet spot that you can get 600 to 1,000 bucks per door, I would do that, but I, I would not go buy no fourplex that's renting for fifteen hundred to two thousand per door. That's super expensive. I wouldn't do that at all. At all. Billy, what's up? Brian, when when are the steaks and beer ready? <laughs> My wife's cooking spaghetti downstairs, man. I'm about to hit the spaghetti here soon. Um, there was something else I wanted to tell you guys that was real important. Also, when you when you're getting in, make sure because like these are the, well, there's three things that'll eat your lunch if you're not paying attention. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but when someone has cash, wouldn't it be better to go to a tax auction buying homes, pennies on a dollar? Yeah, you can try that. I mean, look, there's deals everywhere. Go to tax auctions. The problem with going to tax auction is that you, you, you're going to have other people that are doing the same thing you're doing. You got to go where other people aren't going, and that's directly to sellers, setting up a wholesaling pipeline, marketing directly to motivated sellers to get the best deals. You know, so the three things, let's see, let's see. Let's see the view. You have some more. Yeah, like you look that view. Is it's ridiculous. And it's beautiful. Check it out. What's up? How's it going, Billy? So you know, I could literally buy. You know, I, I was telling Tim. You know, Tim Silk's in my program. He's, I was telling Tim Silk a minute ago. I'm literally buying deals that I'm getting three percent a month. Three three percent per month on my deals. Three percent. That's a thirty-three and a third percent annual return. It's a three, three and a half year payback on some of my deals. It's ridiculous because I have a wholesaling business pipeline set up to, to buy all these deals, right? Sorry guys, I had a call. So another thing, three things when you look for when you first buy. Stay in the sweet spot, for, well, four things. Stay in the sweet spot and when you buy, three things you wanna check, the roof, if it's the central air, how old the central air is, and the foundation. Those three things are the most important things because they'll eat your lunch if you buy. Because you could buy a little rental property, and then you know in six months you got to change the roof. It costs you four or five grand. You know there goes, you know all the years rent or most of the years rent. So it's almost better, especially if you're going to leverage, which I like to leverage because I'm buying so cheap. If the roof needs to be changed, don't use your own cash. Borrow extra money because if you have a wholesaling business, you could literally buy properties for half of what they're worth 60 cents on the dollar and you could go and, and turn this into the bank and say hey look th they'll give you 80 cents on the dollar right they'll give you 80 cents on the dollar so they'll let you pull out equity on a property go ahead and take the money out change the roof change the AC fix whatever foundation issues those three things are gonna could eat your lunch don't use your own money use the bank's money be done with that stuff and you don't have to mess with that roof for 30 more years or the AC for 15 more years and actually I'm getting rid of all of my central units. On my lower end properties, it's not worth having central air. Get window units. I can get a window unit from a pawn shop for 150 bucks. If I gotta change out a central air unit, it's six, seven thousand dollars. It ain't it ain't worth it. Stay away from stay away from that stuff, guys. Stay away from 
You know, if, if it's got central air, use it until it breaks, but don't change the central air again. Put some window units in there. Um, let's see, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but when someone has cash, wouldn't it be better to go to tax? Okay, I already answered that question. Let's see the view. How's it going? Bobby, what's going on? Brian, Matthew, Billy. And don't rent back to the person that sold you the house. Laugh out loud. <laughs> I'm, having a hard time get, I'm having a hard time getting them out. That's exactly right, Billy, 100%. Bobby, what's going on? Yep, that's right. Roof, central air, foundation. Those are the three things you really want to watch out for. Spencer, what's up, my brother? If you guys don't know who Spencer Shirak is, he's a freaking killer from uh, Tennessee. I think he's from Nashville. I think that's where he, he hustles at. Yep, window units instead of central air. That's right, Charlotte. Definitely. And we're switching er we're switching everything to, to window units. It's just, it, I can buy, I can buy freaking what, if, if it costs me six, seven grand to change on an in, indoor and outdoor central air unit, but I can get some window units for 150 to 350 bucks a piece. I mean, I could j do the math on that. It, it's not worth. Do not buy high end rentals. Buy buy lower end. Get in a sweet spot. Everybody thinks, oh, if I buy in rentals, I'm you know lower end rentals. People are gonna want to you know I'm gonna get shot out. I'm gonna get my rent. It's not true. It's not true. Guys own trailer parks. You know the, the trailer parks have like the worst stigma. People need a place to live, and if you can provide affordable housing, and that's what you, if you want to stay in affordable housing, that's where you that's the sweet spot. Remember that, guys. Affordable housing, not high-end rentals, not you know middle-class rentals. Affordable housing, whatever your sweet spot is in your area. So, just to recap, guys, stay in a sweet spot. If you're gonna buy rentals and you're leveraging at the bank, and by the way, if you're gonna leverage the bank, don't go mess with the big banks. Go see the small community banks in your area, right? Spencer says bought one for sixty-five hundred last year. Pays and 625 exact thank you spencer look spencer just said it right look spencer just bought a rental for six thousand sixty five hundred last year and it gets 625 a month that's a he's gonna get all his money back within within a year right or a little over right spencer you want to come on live with me my brother you want to come on live spencer you want to talk some talk some real estate with me kenneth says from your opinion if you don't want to wholesale or deals in your area are not plentiful how can you make MLS listings work to your advantage for rentals? Again, you're going to have to make a ton of offers on MLS to make it work, my brother. A ton of offers. Andre, Daniel. Nick, what's up, man? I saw you on your, uh, not honeymoon, but your um, anniversary. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. So anyway, guys. Spencer, if you want to come on, brother, come on. We'll, we'll bring you on. Let me, let me try to, let's see if Spencer wants to. Spencer's gonna wanna come on. Anyway, guys, look. I do the thing. There he is. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, Spencer? The Shad Man. Just got done. Just got done fishing, throwing in a line. About to go to dinner. You fishing right now? I I, I was earlier this afternoon. Yeah, you, you you snag them some big bass like you did the other day. Uh just a couple. <laughs> yeah. So hey. You know, I'm talking about low-end rentals, right? Because I, I wanted to give some value to the audience because I'm, you know, I bought a bunch of single-family homes when I first got started back in 2012, and uh, I got my ass kicked when the economy shifted, and um, you know, I learned a valuable lesson. You don't want to buy in high-end rentals when you first start. You want to start off with the affordable, low-end rentals that they rent fast, and and you can, especially if you have a wholesaling business, you can buy them for pennies on the dollar and get a monster return like the one you just, like the one you just talked about. Would you agree? Yeah, well, your area, you've got you've got a plethora of houses you can buy, right? I mean, there's not a lack of houses. Yep. Most people will right. Most people that are watching probably maybe they're in San Diego or Dallas or wherever, so they don't necessarily have a whole bunch of houses they can buy. So for those types of people, you might you might try to locate one area in your neighborhood or close to your neighborhood that you can, you know, either buy for appreciation or buy for cash flow. Um, one of the two so yeah well look first of all if i was in san diego i'd move because you can't buy rental property at cash flows in san diego it's not possible it's not physically possible it, it, it's so much appreciation you want to find the little I, I find that the little middle class working class neighborhoods across america the best rental property areas you don't want to go try to get rental properties in miami beach or freaking los angeles or san diego it, the, the market's too inflated well, I mean, someone who's just getting started, that, that would be my advice to them. But someone who is a, is a more seasoned investor, I mean, the return, 
you know, you can't get a better return on a low end rental, but I bought another $6,000 property. It was an inherited tenant and they paid me for a couple months. I paid $6,000 for it and, um, ended up having to evict the tenant, uh, the day before eviction, they filed bankruptcy. So the eviction got postponed and uh, so, you know, there's pluses and minus with low end houses, you know, there's the good stories and the bad stories. So it's not all, it's not all roses, but if you get, but what ain't for the faint of heart too. I mean, that's what I tell people, look, if you're going to get into property, you know, owning properties, you got to have a lot of patience, patience, patience for people because it, I mean, a lot of my tenants, I'd say we, we have about 60 properties now, at least five, well, I'd say probably eight of them pay me. They, they want to break up the payments and they want to pay me a little bit on the first and a little bit on the 18th. And that's just part of the game. Like if you can't handle that, or if you want all your money up front and, and you get pissed off at them because they're late one month, dude, you, you, you're not, you don't need to be in this business. Yeah. I mean, I got one guy who pays me like clockwork on the 12th or something. Like he just, that's when he wants to pay. And you know, he's paid like that forever. You know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not going to butt yeah. the chops over that. You know what I mean? So, and for some people, they, I mean, they, they'll pay their, their rent and their late fee on the 15th, you know, and like every month, like clockwork and it's, it's crazy, but that's how they want to do it, you know? So, yeah. Cool. So what else is going on, man? You I see you killing it in the wholesale side. What you doing? You cold calling like you got the, you cold calling machine? Uh, we're doing a lot of cold, which, which you got a lot of cold calling to find deals. Uh, basically, we're just getting a list of, I guess, uh, owners' phone numbers, and we're rolling through those numbers, trying to find people who are, you know, motivated to sell or even just maybe interested in selling, and talking to them and seeing if they're wanting to sell their house. And so we've got. We had, we had a big month last month, but we've got, I think, six lots that we've got under contract right now in East Memphis. Saw that. And then we've also got um, one one rental that we can wholesale and then another one that we're about to lock up. So we've got some more in the, the pipeline. But um, postcard, it seems like postcards and direct mail has kind of died a little bit. We're still doing a lot of it, but it seems like it's kind of trailed off a little bit. So, Yeah. Are you still doing billboards, well, Chris? Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm crushing it with billboards right now. I just, I, I think I told you, we switched it up a little bit. The first year, I did I did a campaign. I signed a one-year contract with Lamar, and I just put the name of my company, and I put the website and a phone number, and I put we buy houses cash. It did okay. I actually lost probably ten grand. I, I lost 7000 It cost me 24000 for the year, and I think I only made, I think I got two deals from it. We made, I think we made about seventeen or Seventeen thousand, but it cost me twenty four. Did you have? So I lost seven grand. Do you have a dedicated phone number for that billboard? Yeah, yeah. And what I did when I when I resigned, I went ahead. I put a picture of my face, and I put underneath their number one home buyer in Lafayette. My phone's been blowing up since. Like it, it's it's been a total game changer. So I suggest to you guys, if you're gonna do billboards, put the name of your company, but put your face on the side of it. Especially if you're a local, you know, homegrown boy where everybody knows you in town. A lot of people may not know that it's your business. Like a lot of people come to you, hey, Chris, you got some competition in town. So what you mean? He goes, you didn't see those bo- billboards all over town, Lafayette Cash Home Buyer? I said, dude, that's me. Right? They didn't know. But then when I put my face next to my name, dude, my phone started blowing up. Unless you have, oh, I didn't know that would- unless you have an ugly face and then you don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about that, man. They just want to know who owns the business, you know. But So if I, I recommend if you're going to do that, if you're going to do billboards, dude, you got to stand out. Put your freaking mug right there and, and tell them. Tell them you're the number one home buyer in your area. Yeah. You know? So we're, we're, we're killing it. I mean, we're killing with the billboards. I picked up um, a fourplex right on the side of a college from my billboard like last month. Um, but we, we've been getting a lot of calls from it. Are you keeping those properties or are you wholesaling them? Man, I've been keeping a lot of stuff lately. We, we kind of slowed down on the wholesaling side of it. We, um, we kept eight properties out of 12 last month. Uh, we only wholesaled four this month. I'm wholesaling about six and keeping six. So we keep in half. I'm trying to build that portfolio right now. I'm dude. I mean, wholesaling is a grind. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a grind. I, I'm trying to get up to my, my goal is a hundred grand a month in passive income. And I think I can do it within, within a couple years or even less. If I stay in the current trajectory, I'm saying right now, do you have, uh, you know, if, if you have I, someone running your appointments for you or are you doing that yourself? Well, the Lafayette area, I'm still going on appointments. The Baton Rouge area, I have an acquisition manager. In uh, Lake Charles, I got somebody that goes on appointments for me at Lake Charles. But for the most part, uh, either me 
or a little girl I got works for him. If I can't go to the appointment, I'll have her go. But I still, I still go on a lot of appointments. Not, not in you know Baton Rouge or the the outskirt areas that I'm hitting, but the main part of Lafayette, I'm still hitting, them, especially if it's a good lead. Is that just because you want to? You got the time to do it, or what? I mean, what's the reason? Behind I got the time, dude. I I, I like it, dude. I, you know, I like to. I, I really enjoy going on appointments. I really enjoy speaking with homeowners. You know, I mean, it, it's. Uh, eventually, I probably will hire an acquisition manager, but I'm not. I'm not ready to do that yet. I'm kind of a control freak, in a sense that I, I want to go on appointments. I feel like nobody. If if I don't go, I'm gonna lose the deal. Or if I let it, you know, if I let it go, and somebody else is not gonna be able to get it for cheap enough. There's all kind of different reasons, but yeah. For now. I'm still going on appointments. And you, you, you are you going on any appointments? Um, I'll go on occasional appointments, but I've, I've got a guy who runs my appointments for me, and I've trained him, you know, to probably, to probably yeah. take six months to train him the way that – Yeah. And, you know, now he's doing stuff that I don't even have to – you know, I say, hey, did you do this? And he's like, yeah, I already did it. You know, yeah. you, did you look at the mortgage on the, the deed before you, you know, went and saw the property? Did you Did you see if the – if the owner on title was the same person that was, you know, um, that, that called in and, and wanted a, the right. appointment and all those things, you know, that it takes to, you know, you and I probably just do automatically, Hey, we look up the title, see who's the title. Yep. Is that the person who's, who we're talking to, you know, set the appointment, see what, see what kind of numbers they want to run. So, you know, that takes a whole lot of time and effort, but now you've got someone that can run your business for you and run your appointments and you can, obviously you know play kind of rover almost yeah um but i've, re- I've been yeah. through four or five guys that haven't panned out you know so well that that's the problem that's what i was about to say it's really really hard to get a, a really good acquisition manager the one that you you're gonna i mean you're gonna have to go through a bunch I, i've tried with a couple guys and it didn't really work out because like i said i'm a control freak it's probably my achilles heel <laughs> that i don't, don't want to let it go but um but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get there eventually, man. I, I really enjoy the game. I really go on, enjoy talking to people, and you know, it's a rush to me to go on an appointment and, and lock up a deal at you know sixty cents on the dollar, and know I'm, I'm gonna probably make ten, fifteen, twenty grand. You know, that, that's fun to me. So, what else would I be doing? Shadrack sitting in my house, smoking weed, drinking beer. It looks, <laughs> you know, it looks like you're sitting at the beach, man. Well, it's, this week I am, yeah. But most of the time, I'm, I'm hustling, dude. I'm a grinder. Well, you know, that's. Uh, it seems like. Um... It's getting harder and harder to find deals. What are you? Uh, yeah. Are you are you finding people out there to be kind of more competition, or what's your temperature on that? Yeah, I, I am. It, it is a lot of people are getting into it. They, they're seeing what what I'm doing or what other people are doing, and it's um, it is. It's tougher to get. It's get. It's getting tougher and tougher to get. You just gotta get creative, man. I just I watch whatever the people are doing, and I just try to do something different. You know. Yeah. You know, and I do a lot of networking. You can't beat it. You really can't beat the, the branding aspect of this. If you can really brand yourself in your market as the guy that buys houses and everybody knows that, you know, it's tough to, to, to get beat out because what happens when you start branding, you start getting tons of organic leads. Yeah. Because everybody knows you're the buyer, you know, and that's kind of my goal. I try to, you know, I try to let everybody know, hey, dude, I'm the buyer in town. Like, I got cash. I can close quick and let's, let's make it happen. Yeah. So, but I mean, dude, I, ne- I, I, I network like crazy in my town. You know, another thing you, besides, well, another thing that Go I ahead. was going to say was, you know, being, being in the know about what other people are doing in other markets that are, that are successful. So, you know, where we, you and I have, you know, talked over the past two or three years where, Hey, what's working for you right now? What's, you know, what are you working on? What's been hot for you and just kind of adapting and trying new things. And so, you know, two years ago, I was sending out all postcards. I wasn't doing any Facebook stuff, wasn't doing any cold calling. But now, you know, we're hardly doing any bandit signs. We're doing mostly Facebook, mostly cold calling, and a little bit of direct mail, you know. So, um, and that's just yeah. from, hey, some, this is working for somebody in Phoenix or this is working for somebody in Kansas City. I'm going to try that and, and be in the know versus yeah. continuing to do the same thing and kind of being behind on the times, you know. So, yeah, you, you constantly have to be split testing all the time because what, what works, like, for instance, 10 years ago, direct mail, you could send postcards and get 20 deals a month. You can't do that anymore. Everybody's doing that. No. You know? Yeah. You, you, constantly, yeah. you, you constantly have to read stuff and figure out what's working. I, I 100% agree with that. What's up, Mark? My man, Mark Evans. So, you know, I, I totally agree with that. Like, it, it's, it's getting t- – you have to really, really get creative these days, so – 
But cool, man. I appreciate you coming well, that's on. What You're the man. That's what we're doing. We've and, got. Uh, uh, yeah, man. I appreciate you coming Connection's on, dude. Connection's bad here, I guess. But, uh, let's do it again, man. Yeah. Maybe we'll have yeah, a better. To, maybe we'll have a, a more sustained topic next yeah. time. Chilling. All right, bud. Yeah, man. it was kind Later. of spare of the moment. I saw you come on. I was like, hey, let's get. Let's get. Anyway, guys. So. Look, if you if you get in the rental game, make sure you're careful. Make sure you buy in that sweet spot. Start off with single family homes that are affordable. Stay in the affordable housing. Do you guys refinance the house you keep? Yes, I do, Antonio. We we pay cash and we go back to the bank and I refine. Typically we're buying at 50, 60 cents on the dollar, sometimes 40 cents on the dollar, just depends. But for the most of the time for my rentals, I'm buying at 50 cents on the dollar. I wanna I wanna at least I, I wanna get my money back in, in four years. You know, sometimes even three, three and a half years, right? So, I mean, like I was telling you guys, I mean, I could literally buy deals right now in my market. I can't, I, I can't speak for your market. Your market may be totally different, you know? But I'd find that you want to find a market that's going to allow you to buy and, and better get a 2% return a month on it. You know, a 20% annual return. If you're in a super high-end market, I don't, I don't suggest you buying rentals. I wouldn't buy rentals in, in California right now or Miami. I mean... Find a little niche market, right? Let me see. That. Let's answer some questions. Let's see, Chris. How do you feel about buying out of your local market? I know mine very well, but my personal confidence is lower in other cities that I'm not familiar. Hey, absolutely, Chris. Look, this is a great question, uh, guys. So, Chris, ask this question. Listen, master your backyard first. Buy in your backyard. Don't go start buying properties across the nation and and buying shit from other wholesalers. You know, buy in your backyard where you know it. You have to know your, your market, right? Because look, let me tell you guys a little story. I, I went to look at a property the other day in New Iberia, right? It's not the best area, it's not the best city. And that particular street, I went, was like actually a cute street and the house is really nice. I could have bought it for like dirt cheap, for like 22,000, probably would have praised for 55. But here's the thing, two streets behind it is a war zone. They have a shooting every other day. And if I didn't know that, and if I didn't know my market, I guarantee you within a year to two years, that street will be just like that. So you have to know the trajectory of what your market's doing. Like, you, that's how well you have to know your market. Like, you don't just start buying rental properties just because, you know, just because you want to start buying properties. Make sure you buy low. Make sure you buy in a decent area, you know, with where there's jobs. Make sure you buy in where there's jobs. Because if there's no jobs, people can't pay you rent. Let's see. Appreciate that, chat right when you. I know somebody looking for deals in Lake Charles. I'll be ready to buy again real soon. What's up, O'Neill? O'Neill buys some deals from me. O'Neill just bought two deals from me. That was some really good deals, matter of fact. Should have kept those deals, O'Neill. You like? I, I really should have kept those deals. Those were some good deals. I got you, Keegan. How do you do a lease option, man? That's so lease options, right? Lease options. I usually do a lease option if the homeowner's super motivated and they have no equity. And they're willing to transfer over their, you know, their mortgage to me, and I'll go ahead and flip that mortgage to a, a tenant buyer using the rent-to-own method. I'll typically find a, a tenant buyer on, um, you know, like Craigslist, or I'll put a sign in front yard, rent-to-own. There's tons of people out there that that have money and jobs, but they don't have credit. And there's tons of people out there that don't have equity. There's actually more people that don't have equity that do have it than, than that do have equity. There's tons of people that don't have equity and they're trying to sell their property and they can't sell it because there's no equity. So what you could do is go over there, get their house in a con. Let's just say the house is worth 100 grand, right? You can get their con your house. You can get their house in a contract. Say they owe 95. You get in a contract for 95 because they can't sell it. You go ahead and, and get it under contract for 95. You start pitching that contract to a tenant buyer, rent owner on say Craigslist, on social media groups, Facebook, and um, you get somebody to give you say. You know, five thousand down and eight fifty a month. Now you got to find out what the homeowner's original mortgage is. If his mortgage is eight fifty, you don't want to charge eight fifty. You want to charge nine fifty to the tenant or a thousand to make a little cash flow spread. Um, so you, but you, you would basically get it under contract and then assign your rights to the contract to the tenant buyer and make a, a, a fee, right, a five grand. O'Neill says, "Ha ha, house rents for eight fifty. The apartment rents for six. Dude, that was a smoking idea. That, I just sold that deal probably what two months ago, O'Neill. Sold that deal for to you." Now he's making, damn dude, you making fourteen, fourteen fifty a month on those two little small houses. You only paid what fifty grand for, 
I think he paid 50 grand for him for me, and he's getting 1,400. Yeah, dude, I should have kept that deal. That's awesome, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you're killing it with that. Any questions, guys? Before I uh, go, just want to come on and talk to you about the sweet spot and where you should start with. You know, if you're going to get in a rental game in April. Yeah, that was just a couple months ago, exactly. I, I'm gonna have some more deals for you soon, O'Neill. So, yeah, that's right. I sold it to you for 52. Damn, dude, how much money did you put into it? Did you did you have to put a lot of money into it to get it rented out? And you're getting 1450. That's incredible. That's awesome. So, guys, find you a little sweet spot. Let, let's just say uh, let's just say you live in you know let's just say you live in Florida in Miami, right? Spencer says, "What do you think about condos? I don't like condos, Spencer. I, I don't own the, I own one condo, and that's in the Orange Beach, Alabama. It's another beach. Well, it's a I say a beach. I was on the beach." I bought it three years ago. I, I got it for a really good deal, and I, I more or less bought it because I wanted to, be able to have a place to take my kids to the beach. But besides that, I, I don't like condos because it, usually association dues, like the fees are astronomical, and it's hard to make it cash flow. Luckily, I bought mine cheap enough. It does cash flow. It does. We paid two thirty for it uh, three and a half years ago. It's worth probably three fifty right now. It appreciated that much. Um, it does. I think it does around forty thousand a year. It, it. I think it cash flows like eight grand a year. It's not some great return, but I mean, it's 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 something, right? So Parker. So I sold a deal to O'Neill right here. He's one of my investors. He. I sold it to him for fifty two. He put eight into it, so he's into it for sixty, and he's getting fourteen fifty a month. That's incredible, incredible number. That's crazy numbers. So that's what I mean. How long, Parker? How long did it take you to get rent out, Parker? You want to come on with me, my man? You want to jump on real quick? Let's bring you on. Let's bring. Let's see if he wants to come on. Let's talk about this deal, O'Neill. If you got, if you got time. This is a deal I actually sold to him in April. Yo, yo. What up, Chris? What's up, my brother? Nothing much, man. I'm about to take the family to the uh, fair. <laughs> oh, man. You got a quick second to go over this deal I just sold to you? Yeah, that's cool. So, guys, this is O'Neill Park. He's from Lafayette, Louisiana. He's an investor. He, he buys a few of my deals. He just bought a deal from me, that one I was just talking about. It's in the sweet spot, right? It's not really in the hood. It's right above the hood. It's mm -hmm. in a really good area by a good school district. Yeah, it's not um, bad. It's not hot, right? Yeah, it's not bad at all. But, you know, he got this deal for me for 52000 He put eight grand into it. Mm -hmm. How fast did it take you to get it rented out? Oh, not fast. Or how long uh, did it I had like about 14 people interested in it within, within like two or three days. Yeah. Wow. Real quick. What, you just put a sign for rent? Just put it on Facebook. That's it. Put it on Facebook. That's it. That's incredible, man. You see, that's that's what I wanted to tell everybody in Facebook Live. If you stay in that sweet spot of six hundred to eight hundred, yeah, I don't like going. So many I don't like going more than really a thousand. It, it, me too. That's what I just said earlier on the Facebook. If you're on, you know, if you stay in that sweet spot, you, it, it's, rent it's forever. virtually impossible. You can rent it forever. Like yeah. if that if that person moved out, you could probably get it rented out again in two days. Yep, easy. Clean it up right back on the market. Because there's so many people in that that rental area that need rentals and it's so hard to find affordable r rental properties right, right now affordable housing everybody want to so, go in the high that's, awesome, that's right that's right that's awesome my brother well yeah. cool you got it you got any go you got any knowledge you could drop to the audience you got about 30 people on watch right now you got anything give, give us some gold right here man if what you what do you what tell, tell tell them if you could go back you know, when you first started investing four or five years ago, tell us what you'd have done differently. It ain't been that long. It's been two years. <laughs> two years. Okay, yeah. two years. Let's go back two years. I'd have started way earlier. Way <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yes. well, I started early. I started at 22. I'm 24 now, so I got uh, 12 rentals now. Uh, did one flip yeah. so far. I'm trying to get to 25 at the end of the year, so it's working. But gonna... I'd, have, uh, I'd have probably invested in a mentor sooner. Than I did. Yeah. Because I was just watching videos on YouTube and just going. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely. Uh, but there's a lot of value. Oh, yeah. It is. I'm cheap, so I was trying to get the free route. But in, so you weren't going to chrisroot.com. Nah. You, are, you, are, you, were, you were not back then, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting oil changes from you. Yeah, man. That was when I was changing oil. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I used to go to see well, Jan all the time. I, yeah, Jan. Yeah, Jan still works for me. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I would say to definitely That's invest awesome, in a man. mentor. As soon as you get the information, take action. Don't try to learn the whole process of wholesaling because you're not going to ever start.
because there's a lot to it. That's what I would say. Yeah. Well, guy says, I'm 21. What type of money do I need to get in the game? Really, I mean, if you don't need a whole lot of money to, to buy rental properties. You just need good credit. You know, don't hide cash. If you have a decent job making 40, 50, 60 grand a year, Leverage go and job. talk to a, a – Yeah, just go talk to a banker like a small community bank and say, hey, look, I want to get into the rental game. I'm going to buy properties discounted from a wholesaler. I'm going to start my own wholesaling business and buy it 60 cents on the dollar and, and get set up with a, a banker like that. I mean, the deal I sold, Parker, what did that deal appraise for? It probably appraised for what, uh, 100 grand between both properties? I think uh, it's like 90, something like that. I think 92. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you, so you bought it 52, put eight into it, so you all in at 60 to appraise at 90. So you in that deal at 65 cents on the dollar, getting 14.50 a month in rent. Oh, I think. You... Okay, Park. Yeah, I think you froze up, my brother. Anyway, that was O'Neill Parker. So I. That's one of my investors that bought that you know, buys deals from me. He just bought a deal from me a couple months ago, and, and I, I sold him a deal like sixty cents on the dollar. You know, he's all in at sixty dollars, sixty thousand. He's getting fourteen fifty a month, guys. Spencer Adrak says, uh, "I'm twenty one. What do I need to get in the game? Look, if you don't have good credit, if you don't have money, go network with someone who's got money and show them, hey, look, I know how to find deals, especially, look, if I was 20 years old again, I would start a wholesaling business. That's what I would do. That's, that's where I messed up. I got into the game and I didn't, if you can leave anything from this Facebook Live, take anything from this Facebook Live, if you wanna get into property investing, start up a wholesaling business first, generate leads, get deals from that and buy your own deals. And the ones you don't want wholesale. David said, just got my first duplex. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Is it in a, is it in a decent area? Is it um, is it more lower? And it's not a super high end, is it? Is it, David? Calvin, think I'm gonna going to sign up for your program? Let's do it, Calvin. Look, I got I got students across the country killing it right now, man. Um, you know, I'm not gonna sit and tell you it's easy, but dude, it's worth it. If you're gonna get into real estate, you start with you want to start with wholesaling, and I guarantee I can help you. It, it, you gotta have a marketing budget. You gotta better hustle. You gotta be a people person. Let's see, Joe, what's up? Well, I've got that over 750. Okay, good. Well, then you got a 750 credit score. Is that what you mean? If you got a 750 credit score, that's great, dude. Go to a banker, get set up, and um, you know, tell them you want to start. And look, start off small. Buy a low twenty thousand dollar property or whatever you know, whatever that sweet spot is in your area. David, do do you do deals in Central Florida, Tampa, or Atlanta? No, I don't. I only do. I'm in Destin, Florida, right now. I, I have a I have this rental property I'm at right now, the one I just bought a month ago. But besides that, that's the only property I own in Florida. And then I have another property in, um, in, in uh, I'm sorry, Alabama, in Orange Beach, Alabama on the beach. And then I, the rest of the stuff I buy is all, I have some trailer parks, a bunch of single family homes, a, a fourplex, all in Lafayette. So let's see, Steven, yes, you can pick and choose whatever you want when you have a wholesale. Like Steven's one of my students, guys. Steven kills it. He's in Ohio. The guy didn't even, wasn't even in real estate but maybe the past six months, right? He got in, had to borrow the money to get into my program. Now he's killing it. Dude's making 15, 20 grand a month, sometimes more, and he's already buying properties. The guy's only 24 years old. It just turned 24, by the way. It's in a tourist area. Did FHA, 12K into deal, and cash flow is 1,000 per month. That's pretty good, man. What did you pay for the deal total, though? <laughs> if it cash flows 1,000 bucks, what are you all into? Like, what did you borrow from the bank? Daniel, my bandit signs get taken down same day I put them up and sometimes even within 30 minutes of putting them up. I only put up the on the weekends, but I see other wholesaler signs stay up that where right near mine. Any tips on how to handle getting discouraged? Listen, if it's that bad, Daniel, I'd get away from bandit signs and I would start doing some ringless voice drop. Ringless voice drop, right? You can check out slide dial. You could... Um, you know, that, I, I, that's what I'm about to start doing. I'm starting to do, we do a bunch of bandit signs too. We love bandit signs, but they can be a pain in the ass. Um, you know, if they're getting taken down and you just can't seem to keep them up, then they don't keep fun fighting the system. You know, sometimes the city gets, they get really, they, they become a hard ass about it, right? So check in the ringless uh, voice drop, Daniel. Billy, my first rental was a subject to that I got for $2,500 plus closing costs. Generates $250 a month after paying mortgage. Loan is eighty-one thousand at three percent ARV. 
175 that's not a bad deal especially if you did a subject two you didn't have to borrow any money from the bank and it's not on your name that's pretty good Michael Chris what should I do when banded signs do not work in my area listen you gotta you gotta just try something else man you gotta split test measure adapt and change you know some things are not gonna work like you have to try different things try postcards try ringless voice drop try cold calling try door knocking pull a list of pre foreclosures go door knock them um, you know there's so many different avenues that you can take as far as marketing network with realtors like I network with so many realtors guys I, I want to know who all the realtors are in my town I, I go up to me hey I'm Chris I buy houses like I tell them all like what I do and how I do it because I want I want to get as many organic leads as I can by networking because if you don't have a lot of money you need to trade out this for deals you need to go and network and talk to people if you're scared to talk to people guys you, you're gonna you don't need to be in this business you gotta go shake the trees let's see oh no no problem O'Neal ain't no big deal I mean you, you said everything we need to say it was it was some good good stuff on there no problem Dan yeah go try that my man and um, th that's what I'm doing and we're about to start crushing I know a lot of people that are crushing and doing it but look guys it, it, some people are killing it with postcards some people kill it with yellow letters I mean it just you, you can't there's no rhyme or reason you can I can go into one market and try something and it it kills it and I'll go in a different market and try that same thing and it may not work like there's no rhyme or reason split test measure adapt and change and the only way to do that is spend money and if you don't have any money then I would start with go and network shake the trees go and spend the money on you know maybe some bandit signs because it's cheap bandit signs cold calling um, expired listings on MLS hit those up um, yeah I mean just realtors realtors banded signs expired listings I mean there's so many different things you could do to you know driving for dollars guys driving for dollars I mean look if you if I was 20 years old and I had no cash I would be driving for dollars and putting out banded signs and networking with realtors so Daniel whenever you see your signs not up anymore but you see other wholesaler signs up it's because they took yours down, tear their shit down. I was going to say that, Michael, but I don't want to be a dick about it. Because <laughs> I hate, I mean, you know, I, you don't know that for sure. But if I knew for a fact that another person was taking down my signs that's in direct competition, I'd rip every fucking sign they had out in town. If I, if I knew for a fact they were doing that. But I wouldn't do that unless I knew for a fact because that's, that's a dick move. But, but yeah, that is pretty dick if... Um, if he is pulling your signs out. But if he is pulling your signs, definitely go and pull his signs down. Spencer, I love Destin. Seems to be a great market for vacation. Oh, absolutely. That's why we bought over here, Spencer. I bought over here because we come over here all the time. I feel like it's a recession proof little vacation place. So many people come from across the South to come vacation over here because it's the nicest place in the South. The next nicest place you can get to is, you know, South Florida. So, I mean, it's a bottleneck for, for vacationers. So that's why we bought and we invest in this beach house and, um, it does it, it kills it so how much is your real estate program so Omar we have a bunch of different programs my course is 500 bucks we have the course plus one coaching call for a thousand bucks and it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me we have one month of coaching for two grand two months of coaching for 3,500 three months of coaching for five grand and six months of coaching one-on-one -on -one with me for 10 grand it's we have a bunch of different programs guys so Alex should the should he bait them, put up a sign and sit and watch for a little while? I mean, that's up to him. I mean, if somebody was doing that to me, I'd almost want to put one of those, you could put one of those deer trackers that take pictures in the woods of a, when a deer comes and eats the food. You could try that. But I mean, I mean, if you really want to, if you have the time to do that, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't. I would just, you could pretty much tell if somebody's taking out your signs or not. So any other questions, guys, on rentals, right? And where you should start. Start a wholesaling business. Keep some of your deals. Oh, sorry. Keep some of your deals. Keep some of your deals, and and don't get caught up in wholesaling. You know, it, it's it's fun. You can make a lot of money, but the problem is, you're gonna wholesale for the rest of your life, trying to grind it out. But wholesaling is like a quick drug. You get a quick, you know, you get that quick cash. You can make five, ten, fifteen grand on a deal. Uh, are you still using the market? No, Kenneth. I quit using that beacon, man. I, I didn't. I didn't like it. I quit using the beacon. Do you? Are you still using it? You like it? But the thing is with the wholesaling business, right? Use use your pipeline. The best deals that come through, keep them. Try to keep them if you can, because look, you know, you can wholesale a deal and make five grand. That's great. But if you can keep a property that's making five, six hundred dollars positive cash flow a month, you'll get all that money back within a year, and it's yours, and you own it for the rest of your life, right? 
Billy, Chris, your coaching is my next investment waiting to sell this flip. Awesome, Billy. I appreciate it, my brother. I'd love to have you. Spencer, what does your course go over? Dude, everything. Marketing, skill sets, mindset, rebuttals, you know, how to handle objections, everything. Like we, you know, my whole brand is what? Skills get the deals. It ain't about marketing, guys. Marketing just gets the, the seller in front of you, right? If you don't know how to talk to people, you're dead in the water, guys. Learn how to talk to people. And that's that's kind of, we, we, we role play back and forth in the coaching calls. I really give a lot of value on people skills, guys. It's all about people skills. That's why I crush my market, guys. Is it starting a wholesaling business? Yes, yeah, so definitely start a wholesaling business. Kenneth, no, I just got, I just got out of the program. Yeah, I quit it too, and it was too much, too much aggravation. What's up, William? Michael, guys, this is, I only got, Guys, I only got 10% life left on my battery, so we're about to call it a night. But, Michael, guys, this is common sense. Whenever you put your sign up next to another wholesaler, and the next day your sign is down, and the other wholesaler's sign are still up, odds are they took it down. I know this because it has happened to me, and I called the fools up and told him I'm ripping his sign down. <laughs> yeah. Steven says, number one coach in the world. Hey, I appreciate that, Steven. Steve, you've been one of my best clients man you freaking your story is awesome I love it man so Steven had to borrow the money to get in my program the guy made thirty thousand dollars all year last year and now he's making 20 grand a month isn't that awesome and he's buying rentals and he's buying keeping some of his rentals he's only 24 years old guys so if, if this guy can do it and he comes from humble beginnings right he comes from very humble beginnings but you got to have a work ethic guys this I'm not gonna say this is easy like you got to work your ass off but it's so much fun it's so much fun to do this. What's up, Aaron? Aaron just got into my program. He's a, actually a quarterback for the Utah, Utah, uh, I forget the name of the college, but he just joined my program. I'm excited to have him. He's the starting quarterback for one of those little colleges in Utah. Eddie says, cash flow is number one, 100%, Eddie. You, you definitely, you want to invest for cash flow. My banker just jumped on, Tony Carroll, my man. So Tony knows all the deals I've been keeping. I haven't been wholesaling a lot because I've been, I've been keeping them and he's been financing them for me, right? He's been financing a ton of deals. How many how many deals you financed for him in the past month, Tony? Probably got about what six, seven deals that we keeping in the pipeline right now that you financing. Gannon, what's up? Michael says inspiration, dedication, determination. That's right, Michael. It, it's all, dude. It ain't easy. Look, anybody that tells you that anything that's worth doing is easy, they're full of shit. You got to work your ass off, right? You got to work and you got to want it. You got to want it better than the other person. That's that's all it is, dude. I just wanted more. I got a burning desire to be successful and I, and I just wanted more than the, the guy next door. And I just go get it, right? And ain't nothing going to stop me. And that's kind of the attitude you got to have. You got to want to do this bad. And you got to, it's got to be in your gut. Like, you got to really want it. So, because there's competition out there, guys, and you got out, you got to outwork them. So, Anyway, guys, look, if you want to become part of my program, go to chrisroot.com. It's getting pretty dark out here, so I'm going to call it a night. Go to chrisroot.com, book a call with me. I'm actually going to be setting up another program on how to buy single-family homes and starting off uh, as a landlord because there's a lot of stuff that I learned in the past six years as a landlord that I wish I'd have known when, when I was first getting started because if I'd have known this crap, I wouldn't have got I wouldn't have got myself into trouble, right? Dan just joined my program too. Christian... Christian's in my program, been in my program for about six months now. He's actually from the Destin area. Dan, you have to have passion, purpose, and cause. That's exactly right, Dan. If you don't have a purpose, guys, you don't know why you're doing this. You gotta, the money's great, but you gotta have a, a bigger and deeper purpose, right? To, to wanna be good at, at real estate and wholesaling and just be an investor, right? You don't wanna just be caught up as, an, as a wholesaler. You wanna be an investor. Your end goal is to be an investor, right? So. What's up, Christian? Anyway, guys, I'm going to call it a night. Go to chrisroot.com. Book a call with me. I'd love to have you in the program. Let's get you started in wholesaling so you can get the best deals that come through your pipeline and you start keeping them like me. Peace.